So I want to show you how to deal with circuit problems where there's three capacitors. So if you got three capacitors hooked up like this, or maybe it looks like this, that's a little harder to deal with than a two capacitor circuit. So let's just start with this one. Let's say you have these three capacitors hooked up to a four volt battery. And these all have different capacitances. This one's three farad, this one's six farad, this one's one farad. This is a little unrealistic. Usually capacitors are like micro farads or even like pico farads, but you know, that's just powers of 10. It's the same process. Just throw your powers of 10 in there. So let's just keep it simple. We'll do three, six, and one. And let's say you wanted to know the charge on each of these capacitors, the voltage across each of these capacitors and the energy stored by each of these capacitors. What do you do? I mean, you look for if there's any that are easy and there's one in here that's very easy to deal with and maybe you see it, hopefully you do. The one that's easiest to deal with, the capacitor that's easiest is this one farad, and the reason is I can draw a loop. Check this out, I can go from here, through the battery, through this capacitor, back home, and I only went through the battery and one capacitor. I mean, that just means the voltage across this one farad capacitor is four volts. So shoot, finding voltage across the one farad capacitor Sucka easy, that's four volts. Man, you can't even see that. I'm gonna do this in orange. Four volts across that one farad capacitor. Again, because climbed four, dropped some amount, got back home, this drop has to be four volts. Look at it, it's just hooked directly to the battery. So as far as this capacitor is concerned, it's like, shoot, I don't care. Three farad, six farad over here, do whatever you want, guys. I'm hooked up straight to the battery, I'm good. I get the full four volt drop. Now that means the rest of the stuff on this one farad is easy to find. You can just go to the definition of capacitance. So capacitance is defined to be the amount of charge per volts. And now that I know the capacitance and volts, I can find the charge on the one farad capacitor by just multiplying the capacitance of the one farad times the voltage across the one farad, but the capacitance was one and the volts were four, and that just means I get four coulombs of charge. Careful, this isn't capacitances. This is four coulombs of charge. So charge on the one farad is four coulombs of charge. How about the energy stored? So this was the formula to find charge if you know the voltage across the capacitor. The formula to find the energy stored in a capacitor, there's a few different versions of this thing. Uh, one of them is one half, I like this one best, one half C V squared. Uh, there's other versions. There's one half Q V. Uh, you could even do one half Q squared over C. I mean, to get from one of these to the other, you just plug in for one of these variables up here. So if I, if I solved this for C and plugged into here, I mean, you would just get one half Q V. Similarly, Eliminate whatever variable you want, you get three versions of the same formula. I'm just going to use this first one here. The energy in the one farad capacitor is going to be one half times the capacitance of one farad times the voltage, which we knew was four. So four squared, this gives us 16 over two is eight joules. So there's eight joules of energy stored in that one farad capacitor. All right, that one was easy. These are gonna be a little harder. I can try to draw a loop that include these, but it, look, I, neither one of these gets the full four volt drop. Together, if I do a loop like this, together those voltage drops have to add up to four, but neither of them get the full four. That's okay. This gives us an opportunity to practice these capacitor combination equations. So I have two capacitors in series and you might think, oh, six plus three gives me nine farads. Well, that's how resistors work. But for capacitors, it's all, it's flipped, it's backward. Capacitors in series are the ones where you have to do this move here. One over C equivalent equals one over C1 plus one over C2. For resistors, this is what you did if they're in parallel. But for capacitors, this is what you do if they're in series. So I'd have one over three farads plus one over six farads. And that gives me like three sixths, you know, with a farad in the bottom. 
but then I have to flip that over. So that's what one over C equivalent is. That means the equivalent capacitance in this section right here from this point to this point for this section in here, this entire line has a capacitance of, it would be two farads. Okay, so now if I imagine replacing this path right here with a single two farad capacitor, I'm gonna draw it right here, so a four volt battery, and I can imagine replacing that section there with a single two farad capacitor, well now I could do the same move I did down here. This was the one farad, and that one was easy because I did a loop rule and I only included the one. Now that I've reduced this, I can do a loop rule and only include the two. So I could do the same game, I could just say, well, capacitance is Q over V, and I could solve for the Q in this section here, between here and here. The Q stored in there is just gonna be C, which the equivalent capacitance is two farads. That's what we just found for this section in here. Two farads times the voltage, and look at my loop rule. I climbed four, I dropped a one amount. That was the benefit of reducing these capacitors. Reduce these two to one capacitor, and you only get one drop, so that means the full four volts is dropping across this single equivalent two farad capacitor. That gives us eight coulombs of charge. So you're like, okay, wonderful, we found eight coulombs of charge on some imaginary non-existent two farad capacitor. How do I find the charge on either of these capacitors? And I have good news. The good news is that if you found eight coulombs of charge is on an equivalent two farad capacitor for two capacitors in series, those two capacitors in series both get the eight coulomb. And this, this is hard to believe. People are like, wait, they don't have to share this eight coulombs? Nope. You get a full eight coulomb stored right here. Positive, you get a full negative eight coulomb stored right here. That means you'd have a full positive eight coulomb stored right here and a full negative eight coulomb stored right here. People feel like that's like too good to be true, but we're thinking about this in terms of the battery. Like we're fooling the battery here, we're tricking it. The battery sees this front end right here and it's like, oh look, I have a single capacitor. I'm connected to a single capacitor. I see this front positive plate. I see this bottom negative plate. Like the battery doesn't know what's going on in here. There could be a boatload of capacitors in here. All the battery knows about is like this front end, this back end, as far as the battery knows, it's connected to a single capacitor. Well, the positive end of a capacitor has got to be the same equal and opposite charge as the negative end. So this is going to be positive eight on this front end over here, positive eight coulombs, and you're going to have negative eight coulombs over here. But that means you're going to have positive eight coulombs right here, negative eight coulombs. These capacitors in series don't share their charge. They both get the full eight coulombs, which is kind of crazy, but that means we get eight coulombs on the six farad capacitor. We get eight coulombs on the three farad capacitor. Everybody eats on this capacitor. In capacitors in series, everybody eats. They get the full charge um, because the battery's like, well, it's one capacitor right there, but it really isn't. Okay, so how would we find voltages for these things? Well, now it's kind of easy. Just flip-flop this equation around you know, the voltage across a capacitor is gonna be Q over C. So I can just come down here and I can say that voltage across, let's say the three farad capacitor would be the charge on the three farad capacitor. That was eight coulombs divided by the capacitance of the three farad capacitor and that was three farads. So you get eight thirds of volts is the voltage across the three farad capacitor. I could do the same thing for the six farad. I would just divide by six farads instead of three farads and I would get eight sixths or four thirds volts across the six farad capacitor. So they, they do share the voltage. You know, I said everybody eats. Everybody eats charge for these series capacitors, but they do have to share the voltage, man. Loop rule doesn't care what you do. Loop rule's gotta be true. So like these two have to add up to four. They can't both get four volts or something crazy like that. So those two have to add up their voltage and we can just check eight thirds plus four thirds, it's 12 thirds, and that is four volts. So the loop rule holds. How would I get the energy? You know, same way I got it over here. Energy is one half CV squared. 
So I can come over to here and I can say the energy across the 3 farad is going to be 1 half C is 3 farads times V squared for the 3 farad is 8 thirds. So if I plug in, let me do this real quick, I get 10.66, well 10.67 joules, so I get 10.67 joules of energy stored on that 3 farad capacitor. How about the 6 farad capacitor? Energy in the 6 would be 1 half 6 times 4 thirds volts squared equals gives me 5.33 joules. 5.33 joules stored on the 6 farad capacitor. Now this might seem weird to you. You're like, wait a minute. The bigger capacitor, 6 farad, had less voltage? Shouldn't it like get more voltage? No, they're both going to have to have the same charge, just the way this works out. Like, you know, if one positive made it from there to there, then one positive has to leave here. So as this thing charges up, just through, through conservation of charge, these have to have the same amount of charge. Think about it. Let's say one positive went from here. Where did it go? The only place you can go is over here. So this plate has to charge up just as positive as this plate charges up negative. That's why these will have the same charge. Uh, but in order for them to have the same charge, if you've got a bigger capacitance, right, you're better at storing charge. So if we think about this, Q equals C times V. If you've got a bigger capacitance, but you need to store the same charge as a little capacitor, you better have a small voltage, you know what I mean? So this smaller capacitance capacitor is going to be at a higher voltage because like it needs a bigger boost. If it's going to get the same charge as this other guy, it needs to be at a higher voltage in order to maintain it. It's not as good. This 3 farad is not as good at storing charge as the 6 farad, so it's got to get the bigger voltage. That's a little counterintuitive, but it has to be true if these are going to have the same charge on them. Uh, there's one more thing I want to say for this problem. We could have reduced this whole system to a single. This is what I used to do, but you know, this is, you don't have to do it this way. You could reduce this entire section right here to a single capacitor. What would it be? Well, we said that this three and the six reduced to a two. So, you know, I have it drawn right here, two and a one. These, this two and one are in parallel. Now for resistors, you had to do one over business for that, but for capacitors, you just add them up. So you could say that this entire circuit, as far as the battery is concerned, is equivalent to a four volt battery connected to a single three farad. It'd just be two plus one, add up the values of the capacitors to get the equivalent capacitance. Look at this circuit, four volts connected to a single three farad. What does that mean? Well, we could say, let's find the charge on this circuit here. Charge would be C, which is three farad, times the V is four volts. It's gonna give us 12 coulombs. What does that mean? Well, look at on the one farad, we had four coulombs over here, four coulombs here. And as far as the battery's concerned, it's looking over here, it's like how much positive did I actually store up? I stored up eight plus four is a total of 12. So if you ever reduce it to a single capacitor like this, I mean, you're talking about, all right, for the, from the battery's perspective, all this positive it's stored up from anything on this side should add up to 12. That's what we found here. What about this energy formula? If we did, you might be like, what if we do energy for this? We do one half, C is three farads, times V squared, the voltage across this imaginary three farad capacitor would be four volts, and we square that. I'm just using one half CV squared. I get 16 over two is eight times three is 24 joules. You might wonder, what does that mean? What's the total energy stored in your system? Look at, if I take eight plus 5.33 plus 10.67, I get 24 joules total stored on all of these circuits. So there's lots of different ways of solving these problems. Most of them involve reducing capacitors in some way. If you reduce two capacitors in series, and you find what charge are on those, that single equivalent capacitor, that's also gonna be the charge on each of those individual capacitors in series. Okay, so let's try another one. Let's say you got this one. This one's a little harder. It's a little harder because there's no single loop I can draw that only involves the battery and one capacitor. In other words, 
I'm not going to be able to say that the voltage across any of these capacitors is 20 volts. None of these are getting the full 20 volts. But that's okay. When in doubt, I'm just going to reduce these to a single capacitor. So I'm going to take this 10 and this 2. These are definitely in parallel. This 4 and 10 are not in series and they're not in parallel. The 4 and 2 are not in series or parallel. But the 10 and the 2 are in parallel. Parallel capacitors are easy. You just add them up. So I could change this to a 20 with a 4 farad. And then a single, this 10 and 2 could combine into a single 12 farad capacitor. And now I've got two capacitors in series. I'm going to take this 12 and this 4, and you can do the same move. You can do 1 over 12 plus 1 over 4 is going to be the same as 1 12th plus 3 twelfths is the same as 4 twelfths. But remember, I have to flip this over. This is what 1 over C equivalent is for capacitors in series. That means my equivalent capacitance here is 3 farads. So I can replace this with a single 20 volt battery connected to a 3 farad capacitor. Well now this is pretty easy. Now I can loop rule this one. The full 20 volts is across this 3 farad. So I can say that capacitance equals Q over V. And that means the Q is going to be capacitance times V. So my capacitance of my equivalent imaginary capacitor here is 3 farads. I'm going to multiply by my volts across it which really is the full 20 volts because there's only a single capacitor there. So 20 volts gives me 60 coulombs of charge on this. I got a full 60 coulombs. Again, these are unrealistic numbers, but they're nice because we're not dealing with all the micros and picos and everything. All right, 60 coulombs of charge. I mean, but that's for our imaginary capacitor. I don't have a three farad capacitor over here. What does that mean for any of these? So we step it back, we come over to here. Remember, 60 coulombs for two capacitors that were in series, both of these get the full 60 coulombs. Again, that's weird to think about, but you know, if a positive left this plate, it had to go onto that plate. So as this plate gets more negative, that plate gets just as positive. Capacitors in series have to have the same charge on both of them. So the 4 and the 12 both get 60 coulombs of charge. So I'm going to get 60 coulombs of charge on the 4 farad capacitor. Now, I have 60 coulombs of charge on this 12 farad, but notice I don't have a 12 farad over here. I've got a 10 and a 2. So there's different ways of handling this at this point. I'll show you a couple ways to do it. Uh, one way is that capacitors in series don't have to share their charge. Like, they both get the full 60 coulombs, but capacitors in parallel do have to share their charge. So this 10 farad capacitor is going to be at the same voltage as the 2 farad capacitor because any two elements in parallel have the same voltage. But the 10 farad capacitor is going to get five times the charge that the 2 farad gets. So this isn't the same as we said over here. For capacitors in series, if you've got a smaller capacitance, you're going to get more voltage. But if you're in parallel, you've got the same voltage. So for the same voltage, look at for the same voltage, if you've got a higher capacitance, you're going to get more charge. So this 10 farad's got to get five times the charge that this two farad gets. And so if you're clever, you look at this number 60 and you're like, all right, how do I split this up? 60 has got to get split up between a 10 and a two. Um, I mean, if you're clever, you're like, I got to get five times as much. It's going to be 50 coulombs and two coulombs, or sorry, 50 coulombs and 10 coulombs is the way you split this 60 up between the 10 and the two. Let's say you're not clever. <laughs> But let's say you're not trying to take risks out here. You're like, man, I just want a surefire way to solve this. Just do a loop rule now. Now you have enough to do a loop rule. Let's say we do this rule right there. So if we loop rule, we can get plus 20 volts minus the drop across the 4, but we can find that now. Look, so the voltage across the 4 farad should equal charge on the 4 farad divided by the capacitance of the 4 farad if I just solve this for V. And I'm going to get charge on the 4 farad is 60 divided by the capacitance of the 4 farad is 4. And so I'm going to get 15 volts across the 4 farad capacitor. So minus 15 volts across this 4 farad. Well, that means the voltage across the 10 farad capacitor just has to be 5. So I know the voltage across the 10 farad now is 5. I also know, I just figured it out, voltage across the 4 is 15. And I also know the voltage across the 2 farad now, 
this 10 and the 2 are in parallel. Any elements in parallel have to have the same voltage because you could do a loop roll right around here with two elements. The rise of one has to drop through the other. They have to have the same voltage. So that's 5 here. Now I can find the charge on this 10 farad capacitor. I could do it a safer way. I can find charge across, sorry, capacitance of the 10 has to be charge on the 10 divided by voltage across the 10. And so the charge on the 10 farad capacitor is going to be the capacitance of the far 10 farad capacitor is 10. 10 farads times my V, which I just found is 5. And you get what I just said earlier, 50 coulombs, but you do it in like a surefire way that requires no clever proportion trick over here. So 50 coulombs across the 10 farad. Well, now you know if the battery's like, shoot, we stuck, we stuck 60 total on this section here. Well, 50 on this one means 10 on the other one. Or you can, if you like, do this whole move again. You're going to have a capacitance of 2 times a voltage of 5 gives you 10 up here. And then finding the energies isn't that bad. Again, you could say energy is 1 half C V squared. And so you do 1 half. For the 4 farad, we'll do 4 times its voltage was 15 squared. Gives me 450 joules. And then for the 10 farad capacitor, we could do the same thing. We'd do 1 half. It has 10 farads. Its voltage, though, is 5. So it gets 125 joules of energy. And then we could do the same thing for the 2 farad. We'd get 1 half. 2 farads, it also has 5, so it gets 25 joules of energy. And then if we really want to check, I like to check, because I'm like, man, there are a lot of numbers in here. I might have screwed something up. These energies should add up. Let's add them up. 450 plus 125 plus 25 adds up to 600. These should add up. I found my total equivalent capacitance was 3. So I should be able to say that the energy in this total circuit is going to be one half my total capacitance of three times my total voltage of 20 squared is going to equal 600 joules. And I look and I'm like, yep, all my little elements added up to 600. This added up to 600. The odds that I screwed everything up and it still came out right are slim. We did this correctly. So if you've got a capacitor problem where there's like three capacitors, you know, by all means, check if there's an easy one where you could just, you could figure something out without much trouble. Like if there's one capacitor hooked up straight to the battery, beautiful. Start with that. If not, you probably got to start reducing things. Now, if you have two capacitors in series and you find the charge on them, they both get that charge. If you have capacitors in parallel, they have to share the charge. I'll phrase it this way. Last thing. Capacitors in series get the same charge but they'll have different voltages typically if they're different capacitances. Capacitors in parallel get different charge, but they have to have the same voltage. So capacitors in parallel, same voltage, different charge. Capacitors in series, same charge, different voltage.